Hey everyone, welcome back to Retro Tech. As you can see, I've got a lot of CRT set up. I'm getting things set up for the next Q&A session that's going to be coming very soon. I've gotten a lot of questions I'm trying to weed through right now. I think probably over 50. So I want to see how I can make sure I use my best time in that video and uh, also have a really cool setup for you. But in the meantime, I've been asked for a video on this topic for a long time. And since we've got a brand new uh, RGB modded TV video that's going to be going and getting probably a million views or something from the 8-bit guy, uh, I figured it was a good time to maybe talk a little bit more about CRT safety and uh, kind of go through some do's, don'ts, uh, give you a little bit of disclaimer and warnings, and uh, just kind of go through uh, what you definitely need to be mindful of if you're ever even going to consider working on a CRT. Okay, so let's get started with some disclaimers. If you've never worked on electronics before, I mean pretty much at all, you should not start with a CRT. Uh, a CRT is a very complicated uh, kind of machine that is going to be using a lot of electricity and there are some very hazardous points on it. We should talk a little bit more about what's dangerous on the CRT, but before we do that, uh, again, if you've never worked on a CRT, or if, you, if you've never worked on anything electrical, you really shouldn't start with a CRT. Okay, so what else should we be mindful of? Honestly, if, you've, if this is your first time working on a CRT, never uh, do it while it's running for the first time, okay? Go ahead and try to make sure it's been powered off for at least one day, maybe two or three, just to be safe. And if you have a monitor like the ones back here, they do have power buttons that you can push in. So push that power button in while it's not plugged in and then let it sit like that and hopefully it will discharge most of the electricity over time. Because honestly, the time these things have the most electricity running to them is going to be the point when they're running and also right after they're done running. They're still going to have a lot of electrons and electrical current built up inside the tube, which... Uh, is one of the most dangerous parts. Considering a CRT, that's why it's nice to get a higher end CRT that allows you to do a lot of adjustments manually uh, through service menus. So you can safely adjust things through the service menu on a CRT while it's powered on without having any kind of hazard to yourself. Now, older monitors and certain adjustments will have to be made inside the CRT. So, if you still want to work inside a CRT, Let's go look at a CRT now and go over some of the areas to be mindful of first off. Okay, so we're looking at the back of a CRT. This particular CRT is a 20 inch PVM Sony monitor. So, things to note about this one is they have extra safety features that aren't gonna be built into a lot of consumer grade and lower end CRTs. These CRTs just happen to be some of the tops that were ever made. So there's a lot of safety features built into them. There was also a heavy uh, maintenance staff that would go around and actually maintain these uh, units throughout the lifetime of them being used. So that being said, there's going to be some areas on here that it's going to be safer to work on than it may be in any other kind of CRT. Because other CRTs, like consumer CRTs, were never really made to be serviced. The first area we want to discuss is the most important area to notice, especially on a CRT. Your dangerous spot up here, now notice this is a wooden stick. This CRT has been discharged, just so you know, so there's no current in here. But for this ex uh, exam, we're going to take a look at this and I'm going to use this wooden stick to point out these areas. First off we have here is this circular area right here with this cable going in. That's your anode cup. Now this is heavy rubber, rated, and uh, supposed to be protection, but again, this could be worn out over time, especially if you don't have a higher end monitor. It could be compromised in some way along the cable being worn out or some kind of bug getting in there and, and destroying it some. So uh, this, one, this actual monitor is nice to give us this nice warning sign. Anytime you see this yellow lightning symbol, it's something that you should be aware of that there's an electrical hazard in, uh, in this vicinity on this monitor. And that includes this area. Now what happens here is when you have this powered on, uh, enormous amounts of energy comes through this cable 
and then goes shot into the tube of the CRT and inside that glass it builds up electricity and as that electricity builds that's what causes the light to produce the screen image on the screen. So this is again one of the most dangerous points on this CRT. You must be mindful of this if you've not been working on CRTs for a long time or fairly comfortable with understanding what's going on here uh, you should not mess you should not touch this area and you should avoid uh, using this or doing any maintenance while a TV is powered on if you do not understand what's going on in this part of the CRT. So the next area that we want to talk about is another high voltage area so it has a nice high voltage sticker and that is our flyback and this is what actually sends that electrical current into the back of the tube through this cable right here. So this is a piece that over time will eventually go out um, and that's going to be a problem for CRTs especially these high-end ones because I'm not familiar with a uh, good replacement yet for these so and there's nothing really much being made anymore uh, but if anybody has any ideas or has replaced the flyback please let me know. So let's get past that though. So the flyback again generates all that electricity and shoots it into the tube in just normal layman's terms. You'll see another cable that will come off of them occasionally and that'll go to this neck board on this monitor. But there's a spot closer down here that you need to be aware of. So let's take a closer look. We're close inside looking at the flyback from above and I need you to notice that there are two potentiometers generally. Sometimes it may only be one but most of the time there are two potentiometers on the back of every flyback. And what that does is one controls your screen focus and the other one will control the brightness of the screen overall. So as a CRT starts to age and time goes on, um, it can become blurry. And you can always come in here and tighten these up, uh, both the brightness and the focus. But the problem with that is you have to do that adjustment while this CRT is running. So you need to know what is dangerous around here and how to adjust it properly as well as make sure you are safe when you're doing so. Um, so you got to take some precautions because you have to do this adjustment again while it's running. So you can't have a compromised flyback in any way because that's going to cause an, a dangerous situation for you. Now let's talk about some other areas that you be mindful of that will have lower amounts of electricity generally but you could still get zapped from. Any of these exposed points on the back of this neck board provide a hazard where you could ground two points together or if you accidentally work with two hands you could ground to something and then touch something live and it'll put a little zap through you. Now that's not going to generally uh, damage you, you know, hurt you very, uh, extremely permanently but it will give you a bad jolt and it will not feel good. Here's something important to talk about now. So you're going to have your current coming in here, which is going to have AC current. So even if you have this open, your AC current is going to go through this black and white cable into this main power board. Generally, that's going to be the case for most of these style monitors. But whatever type of CRT, there's going to be some kind of situation where the power is going to come into the monitor. It's going to hit a source of uh, a large capacitors area generally. Sometimes it's on the main board of the um, CRT. But either way, that's going to be an area to be mindful of where that current's going in and then it's fed off into these other areas to do picture processing, color processing, and everything else it might do. Let's take a quick look here at the yoke. So our yoke assembly is this whole setup right here, this whole white and copper setup. So you need to understand that, again, this monitor is higher end, so it's got a lot of this plastic shielding on places where um, adjustments can be made and it's really safe to, to work on because it's shielded in this plastic that's not going to conduct electricity. But a lot of times there won't be anything in this area shielding some things. There are some copper um, points right under this plastic that do have voltage coming to them so you do not want to touch anything on top where these lines of current go into uh, where the cables, there's cabling right here that's See, it's got this shielding on it a little bit. That will put current in there, and that'll be a hot spot that you need to be mindful of. Now, um, it is possible to make your yoke adjustments while the CRT is turned off. You just can loosen this screw right here. Just loosen it. Don't take it all the way out. And then while it's turned off, 
you should be able to come back here and swivel this clockwise or counterclockwise to straighten up your yoke. It should loosen it up a little bit around this neck. Um, but again, you won't have the CRT discharge, so you can't go near your anode cap, and you need to make sure that your cable's good. This cable's good and uh, not compromised again because you're going to be getting your hands near it, and you'll probably run into it. What are good ways to get yourself familiar with working on a CRT? First off would be watching a lot of videos and trying to understand more and more and reading service manuals to figure out how exactly the CRT, especially the one you're thinking about or own, how to work on it. Um, some other things to note, if you're going to start, go ahead and make sure you've made a discharge tool. I made a video a while back, there are plenty of videos on how to make a simple discharge tool and then uh, what I recommend is if it's your first time working on it, again, let it power cycle, don't power it up for a couple days and then go ahead and discharge it, which I've also made a video how to discharge it, but you know, you're going to just stick your uh, discharge tool under there and discharge electricity to a ground point somewhere. So after you've done that, if, if it's your first time, give it an hour and then come back and do the discharge uh, procedure again and make sure there's no electricity in it. And then you're practically safe to get in there and start working on anything. Again, no current going into it. Uh, you know, don't have anything plugged into it. Just make sure that you do that procedure. And then, just know then you're, you're very safe to start getting in there and working on it at that point. Okay. So, why would you even want to get into the back of your CRT in the first place? Well, a lot of times after 20 years or so, tons of dust can build up in the back of the CRT, which can actually act as an insulator to a lot of your parts and can make them fail quicker, okay? It's always good to do a nice inspection inside when you get a new CRT, um, even after you test it a little bit, it's good to get inside them and see what they look like and make sure there's nothing that you can see that's a, that's a problem. Sometimes a lot of these boards, something can come dislodged, unplugged, and uh, it's always nice to do a visual inspection and see what's going on. So that's the first thing. But again, it's just the cleaning aspect of the inside too really adds a lot of life to the CRT, um, you're not going to insulate that heat and cause those components to expand and possibly fail sooner than they would have if you'd have cleaned them. Well, thanks again for working with me today. I appreciate you taking some time and watching this video about safety. I've covered a lot of things here and I want to make sure that there's nothing that I left out. I've done videos in the past about personal protective equipment and tools and how to make them and use them. So if you want to go back and look at some of my videos, I've got playlists and the videos are pretty short, three minutes or less, and they go through uh, a lot of things. But always familiarize yourself with what you're doing before you just jump in and do it. I know a lot of times when we're doing things on YouTube, it's all produced and we've, uh, we've had the experience of going through it a couple times, at least people who make content like myself. So we have a luxury where we have experiences that uh, you don't see and you don't get to catch on to in a 15 minute video. But anyway, if you think this is helpful, please let me know. If there's something wrong that you don't agree with, please let me know down in the comments too. I'm not trying to discourage people from getting in and making sure that their uh, equipment is properly maintained and in good shape. But I am discouraging people from just blindly jumping into things without really knowing what their hazard is or what the danger is. Uh, but again, I've gone on for long enough. Thanks again for watching Retro Tech. Have a wonderful day.